Welcome to Nutrition is the Gateway to Your Optimum Self, the interview series. And today I'm with Daniel Kruger, who is one of the creators of Macabre, um, an off-grid community in the mountains of northern Portugal. So we're going to kick off with the intro question, which is what comes to mind when you hear the words nutrition is the gateway to your optimal self? What comes to mind is my own personal story really. Um, nutrition's played a very big part in my uh, my personal journey. A few years ago I was very, very sick. I had Crohn's disease um, and it was through nutrition that I actually found the cure to the disease I had, which apparently was an uncurable disease according to Western medicine. And um, yeah, I was lucky to stumble across someone who, who was... Um, very knowledgeable about nutrition, a um, guy called Anthony Lowther, um, who I originally started off the project with, um, called Rainbow City. I know he's still doing his own thing. A um, bit sceptical at first, um, but yeah, 30 days in, I noticed a massive difference. Um, I went all out. I went, I mean, I was meat eater before. I was a typical builder. I lived on coffee. I lived on takeaway really abused my body to a level that I think was, yeah, I had no respect for myself whatsoever if I look back and, and, and sort of reflect on it now. But um, I did a 30-day complete detox. It was no, you know, nothing, artificial preservatives, additives. I only drank water. I had no tea, no coffee, no alcohol. I had, you know, no meat, no dairy products. I went all out and I thought, well, if I do it for 30 days and see how it runs for 30 days and if after 30 days I don't feel noticeably just different I'll know that it's a load of rubbish like all these diets you hear of and I don't need to do it anymore because I love the taste of steak and you know I'm a meat eater and whatnot but 30 days in yeah my life changed I didn't take any more medicine anymore um, so uh, nutrition being the gateway I can understand it because I think without nutrition I think you're doing your, your your body a serious injustice because you know even on on a on a on a, um, on a biological level you need to, your cells and everything need to be functioning you know at optimum level to be able to do the things that we're able to do on a daily basis and if you're not and your body's working against that you know trying to deal with all these extra toxins that you're taking in and whatnot you know you're never really going to reach the peak of where you could potentially get to um and i mean i'm just scratching the surface of nutrition now i'm still experimenting with different bits and pieces i've still got my addictions like most people have and you know i like my little bits and pieces and whatnot but i'm slowly but surely you know, finding a much better way and learning more about nutrition on a daily basis um, with a lot of the new superfoods that are coming out, you know, with um, just trial and error with different things and seeing, you know, what works for me, what doesn't, you know, trying to shoe box, shoehorn everyone into the same box, I think is quite a, a wrong thing to do. You know, I burn a lot of calories in the job that I do on a daily basis so I need a certain amount more calories than say someone else but it's just finding sort of nutrition wise what works for you and that's only going to come through through practice and trial and error and you know being truthful to yourself as well so yeah it's funny because you've answered <laughs> within that you've answered so many other questions and one of them was going to be your story yeah but extracting from that was there any particular kind of trigger point or kind of aha moment that you kind of knew okay this is, this is it I'm in it for the long term kind of was there anything that was specific within that well it was just when I, when, I, when I stopped having to take medicine that was mm -hmm. the that was the big thing I mean I had the Crohn's that I had I was I was very 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 sick I was bleeding pints and pints out out, out my rear end I was in hospital for a while, I had six months off work, I couldn't work, I lost a lot, a lot of weight. Um, part of the abuse wasn't just nutrition for me, I was still part of the sort of mindset that I think a lot of lads are, are in back in the UK, you know, I was, I was heavily taking drugs at the weekend, alcohol, I was into steroids in the gym, I was double the size I am now. Um, so I was lucky in a way that I had the weight to lose when I was ill, you know, because 
I would have I might have not even made it you know I was I, I could, literally couldn't eat any food because the pain was unreal um, and it was probably those the, the first 30 days as I say it was it was after the 30 days that had finished my girlfriend at the time sort of said to me you know oh great you know we've, we've, we've finished it you know let's go out and get a takeaway and I'd literally looked her in the eye and I said, that is the last thing that I want right now because I feel mm -hmm. so noticeably better in myself. I mean, I was juicing, I was getting sleep, I was, you know, I really tried for 30 days mm -hmm. to, 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 to go all out. I still had the fear inside me because I was still very much conditioned by what the doctors were telling me. I had my family on my back telling me, you know, you don't know better mm -hmm. than the doctors, you need to sort of... Um, you need to listen to them. They're saying that you're at really high risk now of colon cancer if you don't take these medicines. But there just was something in that that just didn't feel right with me. And it, as I say, it was those 30 days that that, that, that was the, the, the key sort of like wow moment for me because after those 30 days was up, I realised at that point that I hadn't taken any of my medicine for the last couple of weeks. And for me, it was sort of like an always, like a roller coaster of, I would take the medicine, I would sort of get better, but then through getting better and the lifestyle I was leading, I'd forget to take the medicine and then I'd go back two steps and I'd start to get cramps and pains and blood again and then I'd take the medicine again and it would take a week or whatever to start building up in my system and then I'd get better and then I'd forget to take them again and I was constantly on this up, down, up, down sort of, you know, roller coaster mm -hmm. as I say. Um, and after the 30 days of doing it, I realised... I hadn't taken my medicine for the longest period of time, but the fear was still in, the, in my head whereby it may come back, you know, it may just be a blip, mm -hmm. it may just be, you know, I, I could be anywhere and I could keel over again in agony. Um, and that just never came. So for months afterwards, I still carried the medicine around with me for fear that it was going to come back, but then it, it very, it, well, it dawned on me that, you know, it wasn't coming back. And I knew that what I was doing was right. Um, and then it wasn't until I actually came and started doing the Rainbow City idea with, with Anthony here um, that I realised probably about six or eight months in to doing that that I also didn't have asthma anymore. And that was something okay. that would plague my life. Mm -hmm. I'd have probably two, three attacks a week. I'd have to take a preventative morning and night. I would still have to take a relief inhaler whenever an attack would come on. I'd probably be in hospital two, three times a year. I was very allergic to everything. I'd go into anaphylactic shock, you know, I'd be having to be pumped with adrenaline. It was, I wasn't well, ultimately, mm -hmm. I think it was my body saying, you know, you're kind of not well, what you're doing. You know, this, everyone's different. So, you know, your imbalance in nutrition might lead to you getting something like Crohn's or diabetes or whatever. We might have the same diet, but the 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 the, the, the yeah, yeah yeah the 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 biology of my body might give me <clears throat> you know something else mm -hmm. I don't know cold uticaria mm -hmm. or some skin condition or something you know it's it's very much unique to each person. Mm -hmm. um, and just to be clear, that what would, when we're talking about nutrition in this particular context, we're talking about a, a plant based whole foods kind of diet. So plant -based. any 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 specific thoughts around the because in terms of that, so that's very alkalizing and it's the healing diet. But is there anything that you'd, you'd add in, in that context, just from the sort of plant-based perspective of why you went one way and maybe not another in terms of healing yourself? Or I just took the advice of someone that was sort of speaking a lot of truth about other things. And these were things that I think have been suppressed even now. Um, and... I just went with my heart on it and that sort mm. of felt right. You know, it sounded right. Um, I didn't do any research into it before I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just went on his word because again, you can, you can read one thing that this is good for you and the next thing it's bad for you. And this is, you know, it's, you've got to see what works for you as well. So that's for me was the 30 days. And I thought this is mm -hmm. my time to see, you know, mm -hmm. if it, if it works or not. Um, and when you say you, you went with your heart on it, you're, you're, a very intuitive person do you think this is increased that sort of the mind-body connection between the nutrition and the, the change you've made do you, do you see any 
other ways in which you've changed or, like, or could you not put it down to nutrition or like what, what's your thoughts around that connection because that's something that interesting my me. whole life has done a 180 definitely mm -hmm. in, in every which way I mean a lot of my friends don't back home don't know me anymore because I'm a completely different person but I feel I'm a better version of myself and I feel with all due respect to them I've left them behind mm -hmm. and it's them that have got to catch up a little bit and I can mm -hmm. kind of you know talk about it till I'm blue in the face and it's never really mm -hmm. gonna hit home with them mm -hmm. I feel until something happens to one of them unfortunately whether that be that they get an illness or whether that be that they have some sort of problem you know where they then start to seek this other information outside of what just gets spoon fed down your neck every single day so my life has done a complete 180 because getting into the into the vegan side of things, um, the next thing was after the 30 days that I felt amazing, it was sort of like, well, what else can you tell me? What else can I do? Mm -hmm. um, and the next thing was yoga. So, mm -hmm. you know, okay. not just mm -hmm. what I was eating, it was then also, you know, what I could do with my body and sort so of So prior to that, you, went into, you didn't do any yoga at all? No, no okay. yoga whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, I was in the gym. I was lifting. But, I was lifting yeah. weights. But the type of exercise and the way you related to yeah, it was yeah, very, yeah. very different. Yeah, yeah. It was very. It was. It was very different to how yeah. I, how I am now. So I mean, you know, my whole life has changed because of the way that nutrition and yoga has sculpted that. Mm. You know, it's it, it 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 made me see my life for what it was back home, and made me see that I wasn't truly happy. It made me reflect on a lot of a, a lot of. Um, situations that I'd got myself into and um, I just started to question a lot more because obviously the nutrition thing for me was something that I was always just told do this and that you know that that's the best thing to do and it wasn't the best thing to do you know and it was through finding out about veganism that which not many people were talking about at the time I mean it's become in the last two three years that I've been doing it it's become a lot more mainstream you know more restaurants have opened so it was just through finding out that little bit of information being something different to what I was told that made me start to question everything else in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you. I don't know. <laughs> and then through my heart connection, trying to see what felt right for me. So, you know, I had a straight away for yoga for me. I had a very, very strong link with that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it wasn't that I was looking for this sort of egotistical male, you know, because I was wearing tights and I was, you know, I was uh -huh. the opposite of masculine, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you like, but not <laughs> in a way. So, but uh -huh. it, for me, just felt right. And I knew that through stretching myself every day, you know, and connecting with the breath and sort of meditating, and I had a lot more positive things come into my life than had ever happened mm. in the 10 years previously lifting weights, you know. Mm. So, my whole life literally just did a 180. Everyone thought I'd gone mad. I thought I'd gone mad myself. <laughs> yeah. But it just felt right. Mm -hmm. And then obviously go by by seeing it through and keeping on that path. Mm -hmm. And I've met people like you and I've obviously started this place mm -hmm. and I've met umpteen, mm -hmm. you know, 100 other people. Um, and each one's got their own specific sort of, you know, story. Yeah. Um, but they've all been sort of similar stories to me. You know, they've had problems with health-wise, they've discovered this, or they've been unhappy and they've discovered this, or they've mm. been... There's got to be a catch, you know, to to almost get people to come over. Mm. Um, and that's I... happening more and more and more because people yeah. have friends with someone that's got yeah. some cancer or something and now they're healed or someone yeah. knows someone that... And, you know, but if you're just living in a in a bubble and everything's fine in the bubble, there's no real need to change that bubble because you know mm. you're cool. You, everything's everything's okay. But there will come a time, you know, when that bubble's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually there will be something that will penetrate that bubble. And yeah. that's, I think, is the catch that I sort of, I mean, referring to whereby people will then start asking questions yeah. and how come and why and what if and it's the questioning what... it's the key isn't it it's yeah it, it's interesting that ties really nicely into my next question which is 
where do you see the future for nutrition? And, and related to that, where would you like it to go? What would you like to see for the future and where do you think it is re realistically going? Realistically, I think that a lot of people are going to get onto the vegan movement. I'm not saying that veganism is the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. Again, trying to shoehorn everyone into the same box is is a really, really sort of naive thing to do. Um, I mean, I've just been on, on, on holiday to Iceland and I understand that you can't grow fruit and veg in Iceland because it's covered in ice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for them to have to import all this stuff and the carbon footprint that goes along with that just to get that when really, you know, they could be getting other nutrition from meat and milk and things like that. But as long as it was organic reared rather than factory produced mm -hmm. would be a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. you know, as we're, we've been going couple of steps in the wrong direction over the last probably 1500 years with mass scale farming and whatnot so I'm not saying that veganism is the answer now but I do see a lot more people getting onto the vegan movement because of the health benefits that they get from it and once you realize that vegan food is not bland it's probably mm, yeah. even tastier than normal mm -hmm. food plus it's healthier plus it's more sustainable to the planet plus it's plus it's plus it's plus it's you know you 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 have to then ask yourself the question, mm. you know, am I doing the best thing that I can do for me and for the people around me? Yeah. Um, if you came and told me tomorrow about something else, you know, whether I could be a breatharian, <laughs> I would consider it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you told me that I could sun gaze every day and I wouldn't need to eat or drink, you know, and I could draw and harness the energy mm. from the sun like the plants could, you know, whether I was able to do it or not, if I was able to do it, then, and I wouldn't need to then start farming and you know, producing fruit and veg mm. and whatnot, I would go over to that. So being open-minded beyond which that what we're kind yeah. of programmed and we're told. Yeah. Which is a, yeah, a key to a lot of stuff. And uh, I mean, your story and your journey and your message is well, so inspiring. The, the, whole, the whole macabre setup is so inspiring. And I just Thank have you. one a final question. If there was one or like two things that you would want to tell somebody who showed an interest or was intrigued in understanding more about plant-based lifestyle about this whole mind-body connection and, and wellness what would what would you want them to know always follow your heart always follow your heart don't be afraid to try something new um there's a lot of information out there which is which is bogus and fake and facebook mm. is filled with it at the moment um you've got to experiment you've got to get yourself out there and try things but try things with your head you know as well as your heart um what else? That sounds pretty perfect to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's basically what's yeah. got me to be yes. here, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And That's... I totally share some. I'm nodding away in the voice because I share so much of what you say. Yeah. And that's why I'm particularly inspired by your story and I wanted to have you on. So, um, thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for sharing. You've had a good time? So, I have. In very, a very good time. So. Yeah. So, yeah, there we are. Hope you've enjoyed it and check out for more videos coming up. Cool. Thanks a lot.